Okay, 60 degrees Fahrenheit is how many degrees Celsius? That's going to be uh, the topic for this video. And a lot of you are out there saying to yourself, well, I don't need to watch this video because I could just answer this question. I can go uh, to my search engine. I can go onto my phone, my favorite app. I can get the answer to this question in 1.3 seconds. No need for me to do all this crazy mathematics. Well, listen. What happens if you're uh, taking a math test, no calculators allowed, and you got to figure this out? And this is a uh, pretty good or fairly typical type of question to be asked um, on uh, many math in many math courses or even a science course. Okay, so here we have a formula. Okay, this is a formula, and this formula is degrees Fahrenheit is equal to nine fifths times degrees in Celsius plus 32. Now there's another formula for uh, Celsius, but I'm giving you uh, the formula in terms of Fahrenheit, okay? So you're like, well, I want Celsius. Can you give me the other formula? No, I'm not gonna give you the other formula. What happens if you just remember this formula? What if your teacher says, here, here's the formula, this is correct. I need you to determine uh, how many degrees Celsius 60 degrees Fahrenheit is. So this is going to be an exercise in um, algebra skills that you definitely need to understand. I've done quite a few videos on uh, this topic, and the topic is solving for an indicated variable when there's more than one variable in an equation. And this is very, very common uh, in formulas like this. So we're going to walk through step by step and solve this lovely question here in just a second. But first, let me quickly uh, introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the big courses like pre algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, uh, college algebra. We're going to be launching pre calculus here. Uh, shortly, uh, but I have um, like many, many specialty courses, uh, especially in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for example, like the GED or the SAT, the ACT, a teacher certification exam, nursing entrance exam, college placement, uh, or the CLEP exam, there's tons of uh, um, special type of exams that people have to take that are very, very important, okay? Take, for example, a teacher certification. If you don't pass the math section on your teacher certification, you won't be able to have your certification to teach. Okay, there's a lot writing on this. So a lot of people study math outside of an actual math course. They have to go back and review, you know, uh, high school level mathematics, for instance. Uh, so I recognize that I have excellent comprehensive test preparation courses. So you can uh, go to my site and check out my full uh, catalog of courses. Now, if I don't have the course that you're looking for, drop me a note in my contact form and I'll, and I'll give you my best advice. I also do a lot of work with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system. So if uh, you're homeschooling, you want to check out my program. And then obviously, if you're taking a math course and you just need additional help, uh, I could definitely help you out. So maybe you're taking Algebra 1, Pre-Algebra, and you know, you're just struggling. Okay, well, definitely want to check out my program. But one thing that you need to be doing to help yourself out is be taking great math notes. My golden rule of math, and this is over decades of teaching the topic, it's just one of the things like uh, a law of the universe, and that is those students who take great math notes almost always have great math grades, and the reverse is true. Uh, those students who you know, choose to be sloppy or they're like, yeah, I'm not into note taking. That's like, you know, I'm not, you know, that's not something I do. <laughs> well, I get it. If I had to show you my notes in high school, they'd probably be uh, a bunch of blank papers, scribbles, scratch, notes between my friends and I, because we had no cell phones back in those days. I mean, we had cell phones. This is like the early 80s, but they were like gigantic, you know, with a big old antenna. So, you know, they would be difficult to hide. And there was no texting or smartphone ability. I'm sure all of you have seen these crazy phones in movies. But uh, anyways, that's a, another topic. But if I had a smartphone for, oh my goodness, I tell you, I'd be texting back and forth on my social media. I get it. I know there's so much distraction. I'm living in the real world, but you have to live in the real world of reality in terms of, you know, your ability to learn math. If you're not focused, okay, uh, in on what the teacher is teaching, you're not going to learn. Okay. You're going to have a tough time. So, you know, if you are sad, you got a sad face because your math grade's not too well. You have to be honest with yourself. Are you doing 
the right things? Are you staying focused and engaged or writing things down? So you got to do the work. All right. So if your notes aren't where they need to be, you need to kind of step up. And I know you can, uh, but uh, in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and determine how many degrees Celsius 60, degree, uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit is. Okay, now, before we do this, let's just talk about um, solving for an indicated variable. So let's, uh, let's use an easy um, formula. So F equals M times A. Now, uh, hopefully some of you are familiar with this formula, but this is force is equal to mass times acceleration. It's a basic physics formula. And right now this formula is written in terms of F. Okay. In other words, we have F is equal. Okay. So we write this, uh, this is kind of described as, uh, this equation written in terms of F, but we can write this equation in terms of M, okay, or in terms of A, right? So how do we do that? Well, let's write this uh, in terms of M. Now, if you think you can do this, go ahead and pause the video and quickly do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna think of M, all right, the variable that we're going to wanna write this in, uh, write this in terms of, we're gonna think of this as the only variable, okay? That means that we're going to kind of mentally think of F and A as numbers. So, for example, let's just uh, conceptually think real quick that F was like a number like 10. And then I'm solving for M. Okay, so that is a variable. And then A, let's just think of it as 2. All right. So we have 10 is equal to M two, uh, times 2. Now, in algebra, we always put the 2 when we're doing multiplication. This is M times 2. That's the same thing as 2 times m, or 2m. So really, this is like 10 is equal to 2m. So to solve for m, hopefully all of you have the, uh, your basic algebra skills here. To solve for uh, this variable, all we do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. So m is equal to 10 divided by 2, which of course is 5. But now if you think about this, what was 10? 10 was uh, our, our, our F, right? So that's what that was, okay? 10 is the same thing as like F. And then this 2 was the same thing as our acceleration. So really, what we just did is rewrite this equation. I'm kind of write all this, Let's get rid of this here. Uh, we wrote this um, formula in terms of M. So M is equal to F over A. Okay, you have to be able to solve for an indicated variable in a formula or an equation. This is critical in algebra. So if you're struggling in this, and a lot of people, a lot of students find this kind of confusing, um, check out my uh, videos in my algebra playlist on how to solve for an indicated variable uh, or solve for variables when there's multiple variables in equations. I have um, quite a few um, uh, videos on this topic, on this skill. You have to have this. So this is a real basic, easy one. Uh, so if you can't do this one, you're going to struggle with the, the Fahrenheit Celsius conversion uh, formula. But anyways, hopefully all of you are like, yep, no, I got this. So let's move on to uh, the problem. Okay, so here I have um, a formula, okay, and this formula is in terms of F. It's in terms of Fahrenheit. What I'd like to do is rewrite it in terms of Celsius because... I have Fahrenheit, I want Celsius, okay? So I could plug in uh, my Fahrenheit here and solve the equation, but I'm basically gonna be doing the same thing. So let's go ahead and rewrite this formula, the Fahrenheit Celsius formula in terms of Celsius. Now there is another version to this, okay? Uh, that's, that's already solved for you, Celsius is equal to, I get that, but uh, oftentimes, you know, if you just know one formula, that's all you need to know. You don't have to know multiple versions of the formula. What you need to know is one version of the formula, and you need to know algebra. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for C. Okay, so this is what we're going to be focused in on. We want to write uh, this formula in terms of C or Celsius. Okay, all right, so that is the objective. Now, if you think you could do this now, certainly pause the video and give it a whirl. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. So first things first, remember, we're only gonna be thinking of C as uh, the only variable of concern, 
Okay, so here I have plus 32, so I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides of the equation. So that's going to be f minus 32, and that will look like this. Now, notice I put parentheses around that. Anytime you have a sum or difference involving a variable, it's always a good idea to use grouping symbols like parentheses. It will help you uh, stay out of trouble. Okay, so just trust me on that. I could have wrote this as f minus 32 and, uh, you know, by itself. But again, when you're adding or subtracting with a variable involved, always put parentheses around it. It definitely will help you out. Okay, so I need to uh, get C by itself. But right now I have 9 fifths in front of the C. So what can I do there? Well, I could just multiply this 9 fifths times 5 over 9. Okay, multiply by the reciprocal because when I do that, uh, I get what? 1. Or right, I'll get a 1C because 5 over 9 uh, or 5 over 9 times 9 over 5 is going to be 1. And I'm trying to solve for C or 1C. Okay, I wouldn't write it as 1C. Uh, we would write it as a C, but that's what it means. So if I multiply this side of the equation by 5 over 9, well, i got to multiply the other side of the equation by 5 over 9. Okay, remember that rule in algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to, you, uh, it's okay, you can do whatever you want to do as long as you do it equally to the other side of the equation. Now, notice here with our parentheses, okay, this, this uh, 5 ninths has to be distributed to both of these uh, um, parts of what's inside of this parentheses. Okay, if you if we didn't have the parentheses here, what you, a lot of students would do, they would be like, oh, that's just five ninths times f minus 32. Okay, that's incorrect. This five ninths has to be in front of this 32 as well. So if you write this, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to be like, uh, you're going to be sad and shocked at your answer. Okay, so again. The details matter hugely in mathematics, okay? So pay attention, put those grouping symbols in, and that will prevent you from making an error like that. Okay, so uh, we have pretty much accomplished our mission and rewrote this formula in terms of Celsius. Now we got Celsius is equal to 5 nights times uh, F minus 32. So this is the formula that I wish, you know, some of you were like, well, if you would have just given me this formula, uh, formula, not the f is equal to formula. I could have done this problem easily. Well, it doesn't always work out that way because if I would have given you this, I would have asked you for Fahrenheit, you know. So you're like, ah, okay, I get it, I get it. Okay, so this is the formula we need. So now, okay, here is our formula for Celsius, and I want to know what 60 degrees Fahrenheit is in Celsius. So this is a lovely formula now will allow me to plug in for Fahrenheit, and when I do, Okay, I will get Celsius. So we're going to plug in 60 degrees here uh, for Fahrenheit. Now, I'm not putting in all the little degree notation. We all uh, know we're talking about degrees, so it's not necessary, in my opinion. Uh, if your teacher wants those units of measure in, that's, that's fine, but we're kind of focused in here on the math. Okay, so 60 minus 32, remember PEMDAS. Uh, we've got to do our order of operations. So we've got to do what's inside parentheses first. So 60 minus 32 is 28. So uh, our degree Celsius is going to be 5 over 9, uh, 5 nights times 28. So we can go ahead and just multiply uh, these uh, values. So let's think of this as a fraction, 28 over 1. So we just multiply across. So 5 times 28 is 140 over 9. And then you can just go ahead and break your calculator out if you like, or just do this by hand, and you'll get approximately 15.55555, and that's what C is equal to. But what does that mean? Well, what this means is that we converted 60 degrees Fahrenheit, or we determined that 60 degrees Fahrenheit is approximately 15.5 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, if you're able to do this problem all on your own, I would say pretty awesome. That's good stuff. Definitely give yourself a happy face, an A+, plus, and a 100%. Uh, that shows, you know, that you um, have, you know, good um, algebra skills, right? Now, if you're able to solve for C on your own, that's very, very good. Now, if you were able to just to kind of plug in uh, the degrees, the 60 degrees, and then solve for C, that's good too, okay? So, you know, if, if you did it that way, that's fine, but, but the bigger point to this video is you need to know how to solve for indicated variables, uh, rewrite formulas in terms of different variables, okay? Just like we did this example up here, okay? This is real easy 
formula. It doesn't get much easier than this. So, but there's many more advanced, you know, formulas. So that's why, like in science, physics, chemistry, biology, there's a lot, you know, mathematics is the language of those sciences. You just, math is so important, okay? You have to stay focused and, you know, I know we live in a world of distraction. I get it. But when you, uh, you know, study math, you got to take it seriously. Okay. And if you're not doing well, you can do well, right? How do you start doing well? Well, start improving your note taking and find a teacher that you like and understand. If you're, if you're not connecting with your teacher, then find someone that you do connect with. Okay. And I'm not talking bad about your teacher. Uh, but you know, sometimes people have different, uh, preferences in terms of, you know, communication, communication style, etc. So if you like my teaching style, you definitely will love my, uh, full courses and you know where to find those. But in the meantime, you know, if you like this video, please consider smashing that like button. That would definitely help me out and uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I already have hundreds and hundreds of uh, videos organized from basic to advanced math on my channel, all there for you. And I'm posting new stuff almost like every day. Okay. So, uh, you know, that's my, passion is to help you out there uh, get excited about math and, and get you to get over these, you know, uh, barriers of maybe you thinking that, you know, you know, you don't like math or you're bad at math. You know, that's that's not the case. Okay. What you have to do is start building up your math skills one step at a time. Does it require work? Yes, it requires work. Does it require commitment? Yes, it does. You know, uh, there is no shortcuts, right, in anything good in life, right? So, if someone says, oh, yeah, you don't have to do this, this, and that, well, then they're just lying to you, right? You do have to work, but you have to work smarter, not harder. And that's the that's what I try to help you out in these videos. And if you can pay attention to all these little details that I'm, I'm saying, it's going to prevent you from making little mistakes on tests and quizzes, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.